Hey coin collectors and welcome to the DC Coin World International Coin Channel. And today we have three of the nicest looking Lincoln pennies you'll ever see. We have one from the San Francisco Mint from 1998. And you can tell that's a cameo. We have one from the Denver Mint from 1998. And that almost gets to the level of what they would call a proof-like coin. And then we have one from the Philadelphia Mint, if we can get the light right on this one. And you can see that's just a fantastic coin also. Two of these coins, this one and this one, came in a uncirculated mint set from the U.S. Mint. The 1998 mint sets are not that expensive, and so they're very easy to get, and you can frequently get really good coins out of them. At the Denver Mint in 1998, they made $5.2 billion. I guess you'd say there's plenty of chances to get a good one, but look how good this is. You can actually read the initials of the engraver, Victor David Brenner, VDB, right down here, without even tipping the coin up, but if we do tip it up, we can see it really good. Look at the bow tie on here. This is one of the best bow ties you'll ever see on a Lincoln penny, and look at the definition in his eyes in his face, in his beard coming down, in his ear. In God We Trust, it says at the top, Liberty Behind Him, 1998 here, and then the D for the Denver Mint. This is a copper-plated zinc coin. And by copper-plated zinc, what I mean is the outside is just a plating like they dip it into some copper, and the inside is a zinc. And this is what a copper-plated zinc looks like on the inside. So here's the penny here. This one's been cut in half. And we see that there is just this whitish gray stuff in there, and that's the zinc. So what they did was, in 1992, they went from the bronze coin, which was copper and zinc or tin, to the copper-clad zinc coin, which is just a copper dipping on top of zinc. And that went from 3.11 grams from the bronze coins to 2.51 grams for these coins. At the Denver Mint, out of the 5.2 billion, they found four so far that are Mint State 69. Mint State 69 is the second to the highest rating you can get. They haven't found any Mint State 70s, which is the highest rating. So the Mint State 69 ones go for $3,000 each. To San Francisco Mint, they only made proof coins in 1998. And this is a cameo, but not a deep cameo, I guess is how you'd call it. And you can see again this one very very good detail on it we tip it up on its side just real fine we go over to the back it says united states of america at the back one cent here a little bit of a problem seeing lincoln in there ah uh, there we go if we tip it up just right we can see him so this isn't going to be a highest graded coin but it's going to be a pretty good one and an fg over here for frank gasparo who's the engraver of the back of these coins they made 2.1 million at San Francisco Mint, and they do have some error coins. Regular coins at the San Francisco Mint are supposed to have a space between the A and the M, which you see right there. The, they found coins at the San Francisco Mint that, that are close between the A and the M. If it's a close AM, that's supposed to be a regular circulating coin, not a proof coin. The eight close AMs that they found where the AMs essentially touch each other are proof 70s, and they're worth about $4,750. The best wide AM they found so far is the Proof 70 Deep Cameo, and those are worth about $46. So if you can get it, if you can get the S1 so the A and the M are touching, that's where you can get some real money. They also have the wide AM and the thin AM at the Philadelphia Mint, and this is a Philadelphia coin. No mint mark here on the Philadelphia coin, and this one's really nice. Also, we flip it over and we look for that AM, and we see that this is a close AM. So the difference between a close AM in the wide AM, the difference between this one and this one. Unfortunately, the expensive San Francisco Mint coin has a close AM, so R doesn't. The expensive Philadelphia Mint coin has a wide AM, so ours doesn't, it has the, the, the thin AM. But this is still a really nice coin, and look how good Lincoln looks in this one, and look how detailed everything is here. Couple little scratches here, but still a really nice coin. If you can get the Philadelphia Mint with a wide AM, you're talking about $5,000. If you get it with a close AM and you can get up to Mint State 69, you're talking about $2,650. There are three different uh, years where they made the close AM and the wide AM. They made them in 1998, 1999, and 2000. If you can get the Philadelphia Mint of any condition at all, even something looking like this, if you can get this and it has a wide AM on it, it's worth at least $10. Unfortunately, ours has a close AM. Let's look at another one. Here's another Philadelphia Mint one, pretty beat up. 
If you can get it with a wide AM, it's worth $10 minimum, even at this level. If you can get it with a wide AM at this level, you're talking about thousands of dollars because it's probably mid state 65, 66 right here. They have at least 100 coins they found from the San Francisco Mint with a close AM, and they found probably close to that at the Philadelphia Mint with a wide AM. All right, that's all we have today from DC Coinwell International Coin Channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you have in the comments section.